Well, hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna be discussing a new diet study that came out in June that identified an association between a particular type of food and the deadly form of skin cancer, melanoma. But before we get into the video, make sure you are subscribed to this channel. If you like skincare content from a board certified dermatologist, hit that little bell icon because that is gonna alert you when my videos go live. Also, follow me over on TikTok and Instagram. I'm very consistent on those platforms as well. If you weren't aware, skin cancer is most common cancer worldwide. It's estimated that about 20% of Americans will develop a skin cancer before their 70th birthday. Skin cancer is an umbrella term for a variety of different types of cancers, but some of the most common skin cancers are basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and then you've got the deadly melanoma. There are a variety of risk factors for skin cancer, including having pale skin, light colored eyes, red hair, having many uh, moles, having a lot of freckles, and importantly, sun exposure throughout your lifetime especially in early childhood. The number of sunburns that you've had and any history of going to a tanning bed are also well-established risk factors for skin cancer. And then of course, underlying medical conditions and certain medications can further increase your risk. To a certain extent, it is preventable through lifestyle uh, modifications, namely protecting your skin from the sun by wearing a broad spectrum sunscreen, sun protective hats, clothing, being mindful of how long you are outside. If you have multiple risk factors, such as having numerous moles. It's also a good idea to do monthly self skin checks. I have a video all about doing a skin check at home. So I'm gonna link that down below in the description box. If a skin cancer is caught early, it can be cured in many cases. When it comes to cancer prevention, diet is a hot topic issue. People wanna know, are there certain foods that I should be avoiding to reduce my risk of certain types of cancer? Or are there foods that maybe can help reduce my risk of cancer that I should be incorporating more frequently. As far as diet and melanoma, a new study was published in June of this year in Cancer Causes and Control that examined the association between fish consumption and melanoma. This was a large prospective cohort study looking at close to half a million adults in the United States. It's part of the NIH and AARP diet and health study. Americans aged 50 to 71 from a variety of states New Jersey, California, Florida, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, as well as two metropolitan areas, Detroit and Atlanta. Participants recorded their fish intake for 15 years. Participants were followed for a median of 15 and a half years. During that time, there were 5,034 malignant melanoma cases, and there were 3,234 cases of melanoma in situ, which is the early melanoma before it has really uh, invaded and become more problematic. This study tried to control for a variety of other risk factors, alcohol consumption, smoking history, family history of cancer. People were excluded if they had a history of cancer, if they died during the study duration, or if they relocated to another location. The researchers really tried to control for sun exposure by taking into account geographic UV radiation, as well as the individual's exercise habits. They really were not able to properly control for cumulative sun exposure exposure, which we know is a major, major risk factor for uh, skin cancer, including uh, some types of melanoma. And what this study identified is that individuals with the highest consumption of fish actually had an increased risk of malignant melanoma relative to those who had a lower total amount of fish consumption, roughly a 20 percent increase in melanoma risk. This was after adjusting for age, sex, family history, alcohol consumption, and smoking history. And they saw a similar association between higher fish consumption and melanoma in situ, which again is the very early thin melanomas. What was really interesting though about this study is that fried fish was inversely associated with malignant melanoma. It wasn't a significant inverse association, meaning more fried fish consumption, less melanoma, but it was, not to be expected. Fried fish, like fish sticks, uh, that's not typically considered you know, a health food. But interestingly enough, if you just take the data at face value, which I don't suggest doing, uh, you might 
you know, believe that eating fish sticks might protect you from melanoma. At baseline, at the time of enrollment, people who had higher fish consumption tended to be male. They tended to be younger. Again, this is looking at ages 50 to 71. People, you know, closer to their 50s tended to be those with a higher fish consumption. Uh, they tended to have a higher body mass index, a higher uh, level of physical activity, and they also tended to drink more alcohol. In general, they had higher education and they also had uh, higher calorie consumption. So given what this study showed, does that mean that you should swear off fish? I don't think so. I really think that we should proceed with caution when interpreting studies like this, because remember, association does not equal causation. The researchers speculated perhaps the association was related to the fact that fish can absorb toxins from the water, like mercury, dioxins, polychlorinated biphenyls, and it's been shown that uh, consuming fish, uh, a high amount of fish, can lead to an increased level in these in the human body. However, this study doesn't actually look at any of those compounds. The association was seen with tuna fish and other fish, uh, but it wasn't, again, seen with fried fish. Uh, so I don't think anyone really believes that deep frying your fish somehow removes it of these potentially harmful compounds. So I think that's a bit of a reach. There's nothing in the data that they collected that can really point you to that conclusion. Some fish are going to have higher amounts of mercury. They're trying their best to estimate sun exposure in the individual's current life. Uh, based on their physical activity and where they live. But that doesn't take into account what their sun exposure was like when they were 10, 15, 20. Did they get a lot of sunburns in early childhood? Uh, did they visit the tanning bed? These things were not, were not, they were not able to capture. They also didn't capture other well-established risk factors like um, having red hair or the number of moles that you have or a history of going to the tanning bed, the number of sunburns that they've had in their lifetime. There are some other studies in the literature, albeit small, that actually suggest the opposite. You can go into the medical literature and find a study that will support whatever you want, but it's important to look at everything. And so there are actually some other studies, albeit small in comparison to this that show the opposite. For example, there is a study that shows that the Inuit people have lower risk of melanoma and it's thought to be related perhaps to their diet, which is very high in fish. There also was a uh, hospital-based case control study in Italy that showed, again, an inverse association between fish consumption and melanoma. That could be because of the quality of the fish consumed in Italy versus you know, New Jersey or North Carolina where a lot of the participants came from. There's a lot of interest actually in consumption of polyunsaturated fatty acids from the diet in terms of melanoma risk. People have actually looked at this. Again, the data is kind of all over the place, but it's thought perhaps that certain fatty fish the um, polyunsaturated fatty acid profile may actually be protective. It's not proven or anything, but all that to say, the data at this point in terms of consuming fish and melanoma risk are seriously butting heads. <laughs> Does eating more fish mean that you are eating less of other things? There are other food groups that uh, research suggests may be beneficial in protecting you against uh, sun damage. Foods rich in lycopene like uh, tomatoes, watermelon, foods rich in beta carotene like sweet potatoes, carrots, red pepper, drinking green tea, which is rich in EGCG, may also have a protective role. There's even research suggesting that drinking my favorite beverage, coffee, may also likewise be protective because of the, um, the flavonoid. But perhaps people who eat a lot of fish, their diet maybe lacks some of these other micronutrients that could have more of a protective effect. It's not the fish, it's just the things that they are eating less of uh, and replacing with more fish. In other words, maybe it's more about having a balanced diet. Not taking into account their sunburn history and the history of tanning bed use, history of the number of moles, I really think, you know, you really can't make any solid conclusions here about the amount of fish consumption and melanoma risk. 
It's just, again, association does not prove causation. Eating a lot of fish may also be a marker of someone who spends a lot of time fishing and as a result gets a lot more sun exposure. Or maybe if you eat a lot of fish, it's because you developed a taste for it in your early childhood, spending a lot of time outdoors, at the beach, in the sun. This study also um, assumed that the habits at baseline remained fixed, meaning the consumption of alcohol, the smoking, and the um, exercise. But a lot can change in 15 and a half years that could influence the results that they're seeing. Skin cancers start to appear in mid to late life. And therefore, I don't really think that the age group and their eating habits is really going to appropriately capture foods that influence melanoma risk. I think if you already have the stage set for developing a melanoma, you can eat all the fish in the world. I don't think it's going to change whether or not you form a melanoma. I, I mean, maybe, maybe if you eat so much fish, there's so much mercury that you, you're consuming, it pushes you over the edge for maybe a more invasive melanoma, but I just find it, I just find it a reach to say, oh, you had a little bit too much fish and that was the deciding factor. So there's definitely a lot more going on here that is not being captured by this study. And they don't capture whether it was fresh fish, prepared fish. Again, if you consume a lot of fresh fish, maybe it's because you spend a lot of time outdoors catching the fish and preparing it yourself, or you live somewhere more coastal where you have access to fresh fish versus people who eat maybe more canned tuna as opposed to freshly caught tuna. Well, well, they're not having that same level of sun exposure. The fact that the fried fish didn't end up being associated with melanoma also kind of hints at this. So yeah, at the end of the day, do I think it's worthwhile to reduce or eliminate the amount of fish in your diet because of this study? Absolutely not. I would make no recommendations based on this study whatsoever. Why am I making this video then? I'm making this video because this particular study popped up a lot in the news and news headlines can sort of be sensationalized, putting it lightly. And we have a lot of media put in front of our faces every single day. It can be easy to react to headlines, not have time to go in and you know read deeper. You saw the headlines and you were wondering, hmm, should I stop eating fish? This study doesn't, doesn't really support that type of recommendation. Let me know in the comments though, if you came across this. Definitely always talk to your doctor before making any kind of lifestyle or diet change, especially if it's based off of a news headline. Uh, there's always a lot more behind the scenes that is not always as clear cut in a news article. So hopefully this video was helpful to you guys. On the end slate, I'm going to link my video on uh, nicotinamide and skin cancer prevention. So definitely check that one out. Uh, but if you like this, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.